This story starts, as such stories often do, with two people meeting in school, Becky Sloan and Joe Pelling. The pair met at Kingston University and ended up finding an art collective called This Is It. In 2010, the group released a short film titled Bad Things That Could Happen, which portrayed, well, bad things that could happen. And it's actually quite good. The short cuts between several vignettes without any dialogue, and yet each tells a complete, albeit condensed, account of some bad thing that could happen. It's a very interesting short, and you can see several elements that would come to distinguish the team's work. For one, a remarkably creative use of props. Fire and water are simulated with streamers. Writing with a pencil is simulated with pulling string. Felt props and costumes are used to exceptional effect. And finally, the whole thing has a very macabre sensibility to it, with a mouse's head splitting open and simulated blood from teeth getting pulled out. These elements would all converge again the next year, on July 29th, 2011, with... What's your favorite idea? As of this video, the first Don't Hug Me I'm Scared has racked up over 71 million views. A sequel was released in January of 2014 with Baker Terry, voice of Yellow Guy, Duck, Tumblr's favorite clock, and more, jumping into the writer's seat as well with Sloan and Pelling. From there, Kickstarter raised funds to produce four more episodes, with Don't Hug Me I'm Scared 6 releasing in 2016. Now there's a very peculiar mix at the heart of this web series. I think the most prominent and infamous element is each episode's tendency to plunge into terrifying visions of the unknowable darkness within every human mind. But the thing is, that's not unique to this web series. Again, this came out in 2011. This was a very different era for YouTube. Many of the big names we think about on the platform today were either just barely getting started or weren't present yet. It was a place for things to be weird, a place for things to be provocative. But if Don't Hug Me I'm Scared had just been weird and creepy, I don't think it would have the kind of staying power it proved to have. Because you watch something like Happy Tree Friends or something from Film Cow, once you get past the shock factor, there's not really much else there. You whore! But if you look at the first video here, it features a unique aesthetic, impressive production value, as well as a message. When you really start to untangle it, you get this overall accusation of hypocrisy, leveled against a society that claims to value creativity, if and only if it's done in a certain approved way. It's at once unique, subtle, and even timeless. Further episodes explore concepts like how the idea of love can be perverted to control people, or the vapid nature of internet culture, or the seemingly impossible feat of eating healthy when the definition of healthy eating seems to change every few weeks. And of course, the series has this ongoing satire of children's edutainment, a theme finally punctuated at the end of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared 6. Its story was built out of many disparate and seemingly random elements that eventually all tied together in the end. I grew out of many of these old YouTube series, but I felt like I grew into Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. I appreciate it more now than I did when I was younger, and that's why I was so excited to hear in 2017 that we'd be getting even more. A television pilot was produced by Blink Industries, Konako, and Super Deluxe, and screened at Sundance in 2019. And this pilot is not for the series that got released, it was a separate pilot. I'll circle back to that in a bit. All that's important to know is that this pilot ultimately did not blossom into a full-fledged series, and an entirely new iteration was built from the ground up. This time, the United Kingdom's Channel 4 produced and we ended up with six TV-length episodes released in September of 2022. For context, the six webisodes totaled to just under 33 minutes, compared to the two hours of new Don't Hug Me I'm Scared content that we got in this series. And this series... is honestly kind of amazing. What's notable to me is how they kept the heart of the concept pure. Channel 4's Don't Hug Me I'm Scared preserves the series' commitment to puppetry and animation, and we see different animation media get used, which is just kind of amazing to see. I mean, look at this claymation! It's so smooth and expressive! That is incredible! The series keeps a similar sense of satire to it, lampooning the modern workplace, the social spectacle of death, and the very pursuit of knowledge being corrupted by motives of pride and greed. But it's also worth noting what has changed and been added. For one, the pace isn't quite as frantic. Not to say it's a slow series at all, far from it. Every episode breezes by delightfully. But it's also worth noting that the kind of crazy energy you can get away with in a 4 minute long YouTube short can be sustained in a 22 minute TV episode. So to fill it out, we get fuller stories and more character development. 
But this isn't just thrown in, each new element aligns with the overall goal of the series, taking twists and turns that leave the characters and viewers turned around in the best way possible. It's interesting seeing each of the main trio having a chance to realize that something is very wrong with the world they live in and try to do something about it. It adds to the overall existential horror of it all. Then there's the humor. Sam Campbell, a stand-up comedian, joined the team as a co-writer. It's very noticeable how much more comedy this series has now, but it's played in a way that really works. First of all, the jokes are actually funny. Could I please have a touch on the, of the clipboard? No. Well, I say put the clipboard in the bin, because I hate the clipboard. Ah! So that helps. A lot. In fact, the show is a superb example of adult comedy that doesn't just fall back on dirty humor. It's really clever, it's really witty, and again, the comedy feels like it serves and strengthens the overall direction of the production. Dark humor and quirky lines accentuate the surreal, satirical, secretly sinister sensibilities of the series. It adds so much to the production without sacrificing anything. I honestly cannot express enough how impressed I am at how this new release turned out. Especially when compared to the Sundance pilot. I didn't see it in person, but you can find partial versions and clips of it online. And while it still looks pretty good, it, it keeps the same production value and everything, it does feel like it strays away from the core of what made Don't Hug Me I'm Scared special. The setting of a South Park style town, as Becky Sloan put it, doesn't have the same kind of ominous isolation as the webisodes or the Channel 4 iteration, and its messaging feels more dated. Cause security. That's the key. I love my town. I've lived here all my life. Oh, but you don't want to protect it? How dare you! It's not nearly as subtle, and frankly I'm not sure if I'm really a fan of how they ended up resolving the whole message. Again, I'm speaking as a guy who's only seen some bootleg clips of the pilot, and I would like to eventually see it released because I'm sure it's still good, but I don't think this would have been as strong an angle to take the series. It's very nakedly political and heavy-handed in a way that I think would have made the commentary less compelling. And the way Baker Terry talked about it, referring to current affairs as a dirty phrase, makes me think they had similar thoughts. But I think that's what makes it all the more amazing that the series we did end up getting released turned out to be so great. It has its own distinct flavor from the YouTube episodes, while still being a natural extension and growth of the series. And yeah, that's kind of the wrap up here, but what's a Don't Hug Me I'm Scared video without theories? The series does give us some new puzzle pieces for the universe, some of them comedically mundane. That's the password, rat eyes. Your maiden name, of course. But the biggest reveals are in the last two episodes. All through the series, the characters seem genre smart, but in episode five, Transportation, the opening has this little bit here. We'll come back in a little bit. In the episode itself, Red Guy seems to be intent on breaking out of the setting, and he pushes everyone to leave the house. But as things go awry and pressure mounts to turn back, there's an increasing sense of desperation. I'll right. never know if Grolton made his appointment. Well, obviously he will. He always does. What do you mean? Grolton always makes his appointment, and no matter what happens, they start the next episode back at home. Well, we can't go back! I'm not going back into that house! And yet, even when it seems they've won their freedom, we get this sudden twist at the end. But no matter how much the wheels turn, ah! the journey always ends up back at home. It's basically a deus ex machina, an abrupt resolution reached suddenly and unexpectedly, and yet it works. It feels like a divine intervention of the most malevolent kind, and it retrospectively makes Red Guy's efforts more tragic. And then the last episode, where Yellow Guy gets his batteries switched and suddenly finds himself not only coherent, but brilliant. Dissatisfied with the world he's in, he starts climbing set after set of stairs, each equipped with pictures of him scaling the steps, and then pictures of pictures of him scaling the steps. At each level, he's trying to find some deeper form of knowledge until he finally meets Leslie, this mysterious entity that lives above them. And this reveal, this live-action human woman marked with stitches, really begins to turn everything we thought we knew about this world on its head. Her unsettling demeanor leaves her motivations and desires mysterious. Why are you laughing? Because it's so funny! Gosh, you still can't see the funny side. She has a whole model of their home. She has replacements for each of the trio. She has control over them in a way that we don't fully understand. We may not ever understand for certain. Leslie gives Yellow Guy a book, 
promising that it's what he was looking for, and sends him on his way. But then we get a reveal of another stairway, another level above even Leslie, and we don't get to see it. We may not ever see it, because when Yellow Guy returns with what I can only assume are answers, maybe something that can give them a way out, the fresh batteries are ripped from his chest, and lucidity is ripped from his mind. It's... uh... Yes? Something... What? Yes, yes? Something... (laughs) Incredible. (laughs) It was something he had known before that he doesn't know now. A fact that will rattle around in his subconscious. It hints that all this has happened before, and it will all happen again. My new headcanon is that every rewatch of the series is canon with each other. An eternal purgatory on endless repeat. The answers to the questions are forever teasingly just beyond their grasp. And with this gut punch of a final shot, we leave on a powerful note of truly existential horror, in a way that only Don't Hug Me I'm Scared can accomplish.